to Delight Channel. Always a pleasure to have you here week in, week out. This week, we are serving the concluding part on how to handle angel investors or venture capital funds. And um, you need to watch the one for last week because there is still a lot to talk about this week, so I do not have the space to do any recap. But what we are saying is that if you find yourself to be um, an object of interest from angel investor or venture capital funds, what should you do? The next, the first thing I want to talk about this week has to do with the issue of due diligence. Like I said, there is no free lunch even in Freetown. Before the investor will drop a dime for you, you will be shaking inside out, upside down, back and forth, front and back, future and past. Everything will be checked. If you find a fund that is what is sought, they are willing to pay top dollar to top consulting outfits to do an independent evaluation of everything. When I say everything, everything from your books, everything from your customers, everything to even the history of the team itself. And that leads me to the next thing. In pre if you therefore think that in the future or somewhere down the line, you have the hope of attracting venture capital funds or angel investors or patient capital or whatever name they're calling it, then remember what I've said from the beginning. Be deliberate to build the right foundation. One thing you are going to find as we go back to the organizational life cycle is that this journey is cumulative. What you do yesterday affects what you do today and what we are doing today is going to affect what we are going to do tomorrow. So, if you have that plan, be deliberate with the way you are dealing with certain things now. Keep good records. I said that already. You don't need to hire somebody to maintain your records, but be deliberate in the way you go about your financial transactions such that when you call accountants, they can help you put your books together even though it has to be from incomplete records. Have the clear vision, the mission. Let your values be clear. In recruiting, be deliberate because um, venture capital funds that are what they are sold, they are actually not as interested in your business or the history of that business as they are in the people and the relationship that exists between them. If you have read the book, Good to Great, where it was established that beyond the business objective of an, of an organization, the most important thing is to be sure you have the right people. Because once you have the right people, whether today you are selling air and the next day you want to sell water and the next day you want to sell sand, it really doesn't matter. With the right people, they will always find a way, they will always get it going. So if you tie that back to what I said about recruiting, that you need to be clear as to what the values of your organization are. And to then ensure that when you are hiring people, you are hiring based on value fit, knowing that you hire for attitude and you train for skills. So that once you have done the right type of hiring, by the time the investor comes, he will meet an exciting team that will increase his level of confidence in investing in your organization and then things may be just a bit smoother going from there. So, the team dynamics, your records, your history, they want to check your customers, if you have contracts, all the things you are doing, if, you are, if your job or your organization has to do with delivering service to other companies, make sure that from the get-go, you are deliberate to have your contract in place properly executed. The investor is not just going to take your word for it. The consultant that is working for the investor doing the due diligence is not just going to take the, your word for it. If you have receivables, you must be able to prove them. If you have a long-term contract, you must be able to prove them. Wherever your funds have gone to, you are claiming to have assets, you must be able to show them. They will take a big magnifying glass 
and work through your organization. If you don't want to have to do a lot of rework down the line, then you are getting this information now. Congratulations. Use it. Be deliberate to put together a great team, to put together good documentation, good records, so that when they come, it is easier for you to breeze through the due diligence and then you can get to the point where you can start speaking commercial. When it comes to the conversation around commercial, remember I already told you, you decide how much you want to give up, you worry about how to do your valuation. Those combinations give you an approximation of what the commercials are going to look like. But what you then need to do is to be sure that you are not lazy in reviewing every single legal document. It is not just about what you say. Remember I've said you be sure you are dealing with people with good character. But it is not just enough to say it. If there are no contractual documents, that's fine. But if there will be a document that will be executed, then you need to ensure that the major things that you have agreed are covered. Don't overlook anything small, big. Be sure that you cover all the critical essentials. And if the document is going through 10 iterations, read through it 10 times. Find your own lawyer. Make that investment in getting the legal mind to review for you. I really do not believe so much in contractual documents. As a matter of fact, I believe that many times lawyers complicate business deals. But believe me, when push gets to shove, it is what you signed that determines how disputes and disagreements are resolved. And so when you are going through this, imagine that you are in court. Imagine that you have ended up in a big disagreement and you need to find a way to resolve it. Let that be the mindset. Don't, don't, don't carry the mindset of a new bride that is being wooed and you are being pampered, you are being sought after. That is not the final bus stop. Another bus stop can come where you become adversaries and it is only what you've signed that determines how, whether it is arbitration, whether it is the full legal process that it will be, that, that will be decided. So make sure that you shine your eye, you go through every aspect that is important to you and you ensure that it is properly documented. Okay, let me quickly hurry along because I don't want this video to be too long. There is this small matter of dilution. If you have taken your first round of investment and then you need to raise more funds, dilution says that the new person bringing the funds, even if it is the initial investor in the first round, everybody will lose some percentage of their holding in the organization. In putting together your contractual documents, make sure that how the dilution will be done is very clear and it is favorable to you. There are many variants. Like I've said, if you need help with this, let us know. And if we need to find other help with you, we will go out find it so that you do not shortchange yourself. Because once you signed it, that's it. There is no English about it. You have to fulfill the obligation as agreed. And one last thing that you need to take care of is the exit strategy. Usually, um, venture capital funds or angel investors, they usually do not come in with the mindset of staying forever. They want to come over a period of time, make as much returns as they can make on their, on their investment and get out. You therefore need to dwell extensively on what will the exit strategy be. How would they like to go about it? Would they like to sell to you first, which is usually what you should do. You should have the right of first refusal. How will it be priced? How will it be paid? What happens post-exit? There are documents, there are copyright, there are patents, there are different things that are likely going to exchange hands during the marriage. When it is time for both parties to go their way, how do you deal with all those institutional assets? 
those things need to be clearly discussed so that they don't become a matter of friction when it is time to exit. And of course, as you are doing all that, you must worry about once the funds comes in, what will the relationship look, look like? Will the investor be having a representative in operations? Will the investor be having a representative in, on the board level? Whether operations or board, what will the relationship look like? Will there be approval limits? Will there be approval process? What will the budgeting process look like? If there is a sudden opportunity or a sudden threat, how will it be dealt with? How many board meetings are you supposed to hold in a year? Where will the board meetings hold? What are the benefits of the board members? There is a law that has to do with the operational details. If you can get all these things clarified, it makes operations very smooth. You also need to know clearly what is the investor's expectation in terms of reports, in terms of involvement. All these things need to be crystallized into your legal document. And like I said, take time to go through them because when push gets to shove, you will only be judged by whatever is written there. I really need to hurry along now. I wasn't even expecting this video to be this long, but as you can see, there's a whole lot to talk about. There's a Telegram channel. Check out that channel. If you have any question you'd like us to help you answer, drop it there. I'm happy to engage you in the group or even one-on-one. -on -one. And if there's any way we can help you in terms of attracting such investors and preparing for their, invest, for their due diligence when they are ready to invest, feel free to knock on our door and we will be glad to provide you with this service. So on this note, I would like to drop my anchor. Thanks for being here once again this week. Next week now, I can then move on to the conversation around brand and brand building and I'm sure you are going to make it a date. Have a wonderful week ahead, but whatever you do, don't ever forget that T-Mark is still my name and all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. See you next week and thanks for being here this week. Bye!